Hi everyone, this is Temu. Welcome to my channel, The Cloud Security Guy. In case you're new here, I talk on a weekly basis about things like cloud security, AI, cybersecurity, career advice. And today I want to talk about a topic uh, which is very important. If you are in cybersecurity, if you want to move up in cybersecurity, if you want to, like anybody, take you serious in cybersecurity, which is uh, risk management in cybersecurity. Now, this is a, unfortunately, uh, this is a skill which I've seen a lot of people lacking. If you are in cybersecurity, I mean, they don't know how to do it or they don't understand the concepts. So that's why I thought I'd just make a little, small little video, a small little mini course. You can think like this about risk management and how it works in cybersecurity. Uh, before we move ahead, guys, please do like and subscribe to this channel. It will really help the channel to grow and reach the maximum amount of people. So let's move ahead. Uh, okay, before we start, what is risk management and why is risk management important in cybersecurity? And this is a question a lot of people ask, okay, what's the big deal? I'm like doing penetration testing. I'm like, a, I'm in cloud security. Why do I need to know this boring risk management? Well, that's a good question. Why is risk management so important? So there are a lot of reasons. Let's go one by one. Well, first of all, if you are serious about your career in cybersecurity, if you want to move up to a management managerial level position, maybe even the CISO position, you need to know risk management. Nobody will take you seriously if you do not know risk management, okay? And I'll explain to you why. And another reason is it is a requirement of most standards. I mean, if you're gonna be looking after PCI DSS compliance or ISO compliance, it's a requirement of those, it's not a choice. And the other thing is it prioritizes cost and efforts. What does that mean? Where it tells you what to focus on, okay? And I'll see, I'll explain it in more detail. And lastly, it translates risk into a language which management can understand. If you go and tell the, uh, I don't know, the CRO or the CEO that uh, the firewall signatures are not being updated, right? And I need like, I don't know, $100,000 for that. Nobody's going to take you seriously unless you explain that risk in a way they can understand. And that's backed by a risk management, a risk assessment, okay? So but, but what am I talking about here? Well, first of all, like I said, management. Management will not take your risk seriously without a risk assessment backing it up. If you ask for money, if you ask for resources, and you're not able to explain what that risk is, why it's so important, and why they should like invest time and money in it. They will not take your risk seriously. You can you can shout about it all you want. You can send them all the technical reports. You need some sort of a risk assessment, and that will save you later on also if you get audited, because then you can justify why you spend this money, why you spend so much efforts here, because you did a risk assessment, okay? And that is a mandatory requirement when when you move up the ladder. And the secondly is it's a requirement for most standards. I mean, if your organization is going to be certified to say PCI DSS or NIST or ISO 27001 or many, many, many other standards, most of them, I think all of them actually, require some sort of a risk assessment to be done. And it's a, it becomes a big issue if you don't have a risk assessment because then the auditor cannot see that all the stuff you did was it based on some sort of a logic or you just implemented the stuff without knowing what is important, what isn't? So I hope you understand why it's so important here. And okay, lastly and more very, very important, it also justifies cost and effort. Your company, it, it's not going to have an unlimited budget and you do not have unlimited resources. I hate to tell you this, you will not be able to fix everything in a year or in 12 months or in 18 months. So you need to be very, very uh, be focused and know where to focus your efforts on. You need to go where, where, what are the things I need to be focusing on? What are the things, what are the projects I need to be focusing on? What are the things I need my team to be doing? So that is why it is so important to do some sort of a risk assessment and why you need to know risk management because then you will know what to focus on. And then later on, if somebody comes and questions you, Okay, why did you do X project instead of Y project? Why did you fix X thing instead of Y thing? You can say, okay, why? Because I did a risk assessment. And that is the reason I focused here. And I did not focus there because that risk was not worth focusing on, wasting so much time on. Okay, so th this is what I'm talking about, guys. This is why it's so important. So I hope you understood why risk management is important. And what's the, like, the technical definition of risk management? I mean, there are many definitions. If you want to lose the simplest one, which is the potential for an unplanned negative business outcome involving the failure or misuse of IT. That is like the more technical definition, which I don't like. The simply put in simple English, what is risk management? What does it tell you? What is the chance of like a bad thing happening and how much will it damage you? Okay. That is what risk management is. That is what it tells you. And that is why it enables you to focus. Okay. So that is the untechnical definition of risk management. And that is what it means if you look at it. So what is the process? So let's 
take if you wanted to do a risk assessment and do some sort of risk management in your company what what are you going to do for so for when you talk about risk management the first step is a risk assessment right that is one to what i want to focus on so the risk assessment is what you do is you identify your assets okay what is it that you're trying to protect i mean you can't just go around implementing stuff okay i'll implement anti virus there i'll do that i'll do that no first of all list down your assets okay what am i you maybe you have servers maybe you have shared folders on the cloud maybe you have databases maybe you have pii maybe you have an application all of those are assets even your people are assets even your data centers are assets list all of them down anything you feel that you need to protect list it down as an asset okay so that you have a complete inventory of the things which you are trying to protect okay so that you've done that now what else what do you do now then you assign it a value you need to assign it a value because then you will know what to focus on you can maybe your servers are high right and maybe your database is a medium i don't think the database should be medium but okay let's for the example and maybe your shared folders are low okay or maybe your databases can be high because it, it might have pii or pci data and your servers might be uh, what do you call medium because maybe they only contain i don't know uh, inventory data or anonymized data nothing is serious there okay and maybe your folders are high because it they might have salary data i mean it's up to you usually what happens is uh, you sit down with management and you say okay what are the things which are high impact in your organization what if something happens to this thing what is the impact so you need to sit down with them and understand don't try to do it yourself it is it is a collaborative team effort so you understand what's happening okay so now you have the assets and now you have given them some sort of a value okay what else now you need to identify the threats this is where your security expertise comes on okay what can happen what can go wrong maybe somebody can do a ddos on the server maybe the database gets corrupted maybe the shared folder somebody some unauthorized person accesses it and looks at the salary of all the people there okay so those are the things that those are the threats which can happen like right? so you need to th think of all the things one asset can have multiple threats okay one server there may, maybe 50 things that can go wrong maybe there are 100 things that can go wrong with the database maybe there are 1000 things that can go wrong with a folder list all of them down okay so now you have the assets you have given them a value you have identified the threats okay now you need to identify the vulnerability so what's the difference between the previous and this one this is how can that threat happen so if you look back maybe you have like a ddos attack happening how can that threat happen because you don't have a ddos protection so that's a vulnerability how can a malware imp impact my server how can that happen why because you don't have some sort of anti malware solution okay how can a person access the shared folder what's the vulnerability the permissions were not set so these are all the vulnerabilities which are there so you need to take of them and now not now that you have a vulnerability what what do you do uh think of the likelihood what's the likelihood what's the chance of this happening well you, you might say that okay there's never been a ddos attack in like 50 years in our company just, just as an example okay the likelihood of that is low or or maybe there's a you, to get to, to for a malware infection to happen in my company there are so many things which need to happen before somebody can do that so that is the so the likelihood is low or maybe you can say my server has a patch missing and this patch is being exploited by like every attacker out there and that server is internet facing there is a high likelihood now so so it, it doesn't have to be mathematical you can just justify it like 50% chance 75% chance there are lots of methodologies but just the basic logic is this okay so now you have identified the likelihood of a vulnerability happening what is is there the impact the impact is how bad will it be if something happens so what's the damage the maximum damage that will happen if a ddos attack happens or uh, maybe you'll you'll be fined like i don't know fifty thousand dollars uh maybe your name will be in the newspapers maybe your uh, what do you call you'll have to tell all your customers maybe there'll be a huge reputational impact all of those things you need to quantify into some sort of an impact like high medium low usually companies have some sort of a matrix they say if okay if more than 50000 it's a high impact less than 50000 it's medium like those sort of things okay it really depends company to company i just want to explain to you what the process is okay and then after that based on that you can now calculate the risk so you have the probability or the likelihood and you have the impact based on that you can just calculate the risk so maybe you had a risk which had a low probability but a high impact so that becomes medium okay or uh, what do you call low something low and a high impact becomes medium like based on that it doesn't have to be like this this is just giving you an example so i hope you understood guys so you've probably done this before right informally you might have thought about the risk 
risk management is just it formalizes the whole process and let's look at it in this example because that will make it easier for you okay so maybe your ciso comes to you or maybe your manager comes to you and say hey i need you to do a risk assessment of a cloud server there's a cloud server in our company i need you to do a risk assessment of what happens if somebody is able to compromise it break it okay so what are you going to do based on what we've learned let's take a look at it well first of all you would assign it a value right you would say okay this is a cloud server it has pii it has so much stuff this is a high value server a high uh, so you've assigned it a value because if something happens to it it's going to be a big impact okay what are the threats that can happen to it well a cyber criminal might access it he might get away he might open a public port over the internet and access all the data and we might find it on the forum of some like reddit or some it's there right so those are the things you can say okay this is the biggest threat i can think of maybe somebody might accidentally misconfigure it or you can, like i said one asset can have multiple threats okay then what okay let's identify the vulnerabilities okay how can a how can a hacker access the server maybe your patches are missing maybe you don't have enough uh, like firewall maybe you don't have a web application firewall maybe you don't have a ddos protection maybe uh, you haven't pen tested it server in like 5 years so all these are vulnerabilities which you need to think of so those are the vulnerabilities now how that threat can happen okay so what's the likelihood of this happening what's the likelihood of a hacker compromising your server well you have missing patches and this uh, this particular uh, vulnerability that is being exploited by a lot of hackers in the industry you're seeing in the news these things are happening in the news this is a zero day exploit which is present on your server which is over the internet then the likelihood is very very high isn't it okay so now you have the likelihood okay what's the impact it may, may will be high it's a public facing server it has pii customer data if something happens your company's name will be in the news okay so now you you understood you have a high impact high likelihood you've got the vulnerability now it's easy for you to calculate the risk you can just say look a probability is high impact is high this is a high risk so now you can go to the management and show them look i did the risk assessment based on this and this is what the impact is so this will really really help management to understand where you're coming from give you budget give you the help you need okay so what are the tools you need to do a risk assessment okay so like i said they are like a risk risk assessment risk management it's a top of it is a type of a science right it's not like a hard and fast the more you do it the better you get what are the tools you can use well my favorite tool which might surprise people is microsoft excel that's it you don't need to invest in a multi billion dollar solution guys provided you know what you're doing just microsoft excel is enough just create a simple excel sheet start practicing your risk assessments you don't need some sort of a hi fi uh, half a million dollar investment okay just start doing it like this provided you do it consistently provided you do it backed up by some sort of a proper policy which is made you can start doing it i'm going to make a follow up on this also i don't want to overburden you about other things like control okay now you've done the risk assessment uh, in part 2 we're going to be talking about how you can implement controls and then how you can put in like uh, you can look at the residual risk and then uh, what are risk acceptances but this was the first part because just to give you a primer about how it works like i said uh, if you want in, interested in this talk to your manager and you do a sample risk assessment so that you have you get understood this process look at how your company are doing it you you will probably have a policy about doing it but definitely this is a tool you should learn if you are interested and you are serious about it so guys thank you very much for listening to this video do like and subscribe to this channel if you found it valuable do comment on it thank you very